on the UIA sweet power ED122 of, of OFS. Okay, power ED1 off. Power ED2. So our today's spacewalk has officially begun at 6.01 a.m. Central Time, 7.01 a.m. Eastern Time. Mike Hopkins and Rick Mastracchio now officially underway for today. Four LEDs, OFF. Okay, stand by. So Rick Mastracchio there has made his way out. He's got the suit with the red stripe. Mike Hopkins making his way out here shortly. He's got the all-white suit. And uh, say again the distance to station stopper. Less than half a meter. So there's a good look at the actual uh, pump module itself. You see both the uh, fluid lines there in the middle and the electrical lines on either side of it. Tracy, let's talk about this for a second because you're very familiar with this work site. These quick disconnects can be a little bit tricky, can't they? They certainly can. They are our largest quick disconnects on, on orbit. And when uh, we did this, task on uh, uh, in 2010 those lines were pressurized uh, up to about 360 psi which made the um, operation a lot more difficult we have since reduced the pressure um, for these tasks the lesson learned there to about 180. Okay. Ingress aid is tucked in. Yep looks good. Okay thanks Rick. As we continue to take a look at Rick Mastranchio's helmet cam here the uh, crew getting this pump removal underway. They're just undoing some wire ties that uh, Tracy, you and Doug both did back three years ago. Yes, um, just uh, basically wind the tethers for all three spool po positioning devices together just to keep it neat. Keep it neat, yeah. Okay, Doug, the wire tie is removed in my trash bag. I'll bring it home for you and give it back to you. Oh, awesome. Thanks, Rick. It's demated. Pull back on the release ring and demate. I see you got that. Yep. So now we're in 46 minutes into today's spacewalk. The first of these ammonia lines has been disconnected. And not visible. This is Mission Control Houston. One hour, 56 minutes into today's spacewalk. Two of these ammonia lines have been disconnected, especially this bigger one that uh, gave some problems back in 2010. But to Rick Mastracchio and Mike Hopkins made quick work of it. He was talking about some snow that he saw. Now, that is frozen ammonia coming out of those lines. Obviously, they watch ammonia pretty closely. Uh, they did confirm that some of it did get on his suit. But, uh, Tracy, let's talk about what they would do. I mean, there's a procedure to take care of that, right? Yeah, when they... Um so what I imagine got on his suit was solid, and um, the solid does not penetrate the suit. It just bounces off. Bounces but, off. but for the... Uh, but just for the uh, uh, meeting the QD, it's the big one, the M3 line. We're going to meet that one first. Just for the uh, safety protocol, we'll do what's called a bake out, and, and they can be baking out during the time they're doing a task. It'll just be um, correlated to what the time would be if they were inside the crew lock. And then they'll do some testing once they get in the crew lock. This will be at the end of the yeah. okay. end of the AVA. So the last of the uh, fluid disconnects has been removed from this pump module, so all of the ammonia lines have been disconnected at this point. On the male and female uh, uh, QD for debris damage and ammonia crystals, and about, about like the M1 line on the, on the ammonia crystals, Rick? So what they will do is go ahead and begin the process of removing the electrical connectors from the failed pump, and then they will actually remove it and put it on what you will hear called a POA. This is basically just an attachment point, a temporary stowage location outside the station for uh, pieces of hardware. Okay, I'm ready, Doug. So the crew is reporting uh, to the ground teams that all the different electrical connectors have been removed from the failed pump itself. So coming up, they're going to be removing the pump actually from where it has been mounted since 2010. Again, this pump weighs 780 pounds. It's about the size of a refrigerator. Hold on, there's, a, there's a second hall, Rick. I can see it. You need to come out about another uh, eight inches. Okay, let me try to do it. Hey, stay, yeah, Kalichi, uh, station forward just a, uh, you know, five or ten centimeters. Okay, uh, station forward ten centimeters. Here comes the motion. I'm the motion. Copy.
This view on board the International Space Station as it flies 261 miles above the uh, South Pacific Ocean gives you a pretty dramatic view here of exactly how big this pump is. You get a sense of just the sheer size of it. Rick Mastracchio still hanging on to it. Mike Hopkins there on the right-hand side helping. So Tracy, as we take a look at this, uh, tell everybody what we're looking at. Well, on the right side of the screen, you see the what we're calling the POA, which is the um, uh, receptacle. It basically duplicates the end of the uh, robotic arm, and it's grabbing a hold of what's on the left side, which is the pump module that Rick, you see at the bottom left, is holding. And that adjustable grapple bar, the AGB, was attached to the pump module, and it is now the interface between the pump module and the POA that's holding it in place. And Koichi, the arm operator, is not only operating um, the arm to bring Rick and the pump module into the POA, but he also will switch um, screens and then control the POA itself and then uh, activate the snares to wrap around the grapple fixture that is attached to the pump module, and it'll hold it secure in place. Whenever you're working with equipment this big, I mean, you know, obviously we've never been up there, but it, it looks it looks like it'd be a little bit hard to kind of guide this stuff in whenever you're talking about equipment that's that big in nature. It's kind of hard to see. Absolutely, and, and you can see where Rick is. His eyes are now looking right at a pump module. That's the, his view through his helmet camera you're seeing right there. He can't see the grapple fixture, and that's what um, Koichi is looking at through a camera that's mounted on the top side of the POA, and he can see an alignment pin that's helping him give uh, directions to Rick as well as his own inputs, Koichi's inputs into the arm to bring the pump module into the POA. Yeah, looks like they got it secured, so it does. that's uh, good news. Nice job. This is Mission Control Houston. We're now five hours and nine minutes into today's spacewalk. What they're doing is uh, pretty much cleaning up the activities for today. This should last about another 30 minutes, and that should end today's spacewalk. They were very far ahead of the timeline today. Um, they did go ahead and get the pump module removed from where it was, uh, where it had been over the last several years, and put up on this payload attachment point. That's where it will stay uh, for the near future. And uh, they did offer the crew the chance to go ahead and start doing some forward work on the new pump. All that was supposed to be done on uh, the second EVA and the third EVA that are planned for uh, Monday and Wednesday. But the crew deferred and said, we'll go ahead and take care of that on Monday. Uh, they're in no rush to go ahead and get that done today because there's plenty of time to do it on Monday. So this was kind of a good stopping point for the crew, sort of the first chapter of this spacewalk coming to a close as they got the old one, the old pump, taken care of. So Rick Mastracchio, who is the lead spacewalker today, decided to go ahead and uh, uh, wrap up things, and they will uh, go ahead and move on back to the Quest airlock as we uh, watch a